Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Sammy Hoy. I use he, him pronouns. It's my great pleasure as my president to welcome you all uh, to the eighth annual Upstart Venture Competition. And thank you all for attending this event. It's a very special event that marks the conclusion of this year's college-wide competition. It's always amazing to see how our AMICA students and the first-year alums are channeling their passion into innovative businesses. And let us celebrate this evening the brilliance that can be achieved when passion, ideas, creativity, social purpose, and opportunity come together, as you soon see on stage. The students' response this year has been terrific, with over 30 ventures coming from a variety of um, programs at, uh, and majors across uh, MICA, as always the case. The participation in round one of the competition resulted in the eight finalists that you're gonna see uh, today presenting their ideas uh, to you. And these innovators are competing for uh, sharing a pool of $105,000 to propel their ventures forward. And this year's cohort uh, will be joining those that came before them. And we have some amazing alums uh, upstairs. I hope that you'll be able to visit their booths and uh, spoke with them a, <clears throat> a little bit. Uh, who have proven that uh, great ideas can translate into uh, great business and great opportunities. And we are so um, happy you know, for them and also really applaud them for um, their um, having participated, discovering creative entrepreneurship at MICA, but really also for their perseverance uh, and, and making sure that their business are still thriving going forward. And it's wonderful through our studies that 75% of the winners from the uh, venture competition over the last eight, seven years, uh, and hopefully plus this year's as well, are still in business. That is amazing um, um, kind of the record. All this would not be possible without the belief and the support of a very generous lead donor for this effort, the Philip E. and Carol R. Radcliffe Foundation. On behalf of MICA's trustees, the students, faculty, and staff, I want to express my sincere gratitude to the Radcliffe Foundation and also the amazing people behind them. Two of them are right here. Um, the CEO, uh, Colleen Cassidy, and also trustee uh, Jim Wright, who represent his fellow trustees. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we really cannot do this without you. Please, I ask everyone to join me in applauding them. Thank you. Thank you. It is with their growing commitment that we have been able to infuse MICA with the spirit and skills and expertise of creative entrepreneurship across all disciplines. Through the Redcliffe Center for Creative Entrepreneurship, we've been able to launch and grow new academic initiatives and co-curricular activities. We are particularly excited about the first year fellows program in creative entrepreneurship, which has been a success. It is a year long program for incoming first year students focus on integrating studio research with emerging technologies, project-based learning, professional practice, and financial literacy at a very foundational level. In addition, MICA now has a minor in creative entrepreneurship that started uh, in fall 2021, and students are particularly enjoying the new business class and the entrepreneurial mindset course. And finally, MICA now offers a way to integrate entrepreneurship concepts into existing classes with the faculty teaching grants providing up to $1,200 in funding to support um, faculty who want to innovate and introduce elements into their courses. So you see this upstart venture competition is just one of many things we do at MICA to make creative entrepreneurship part of art and design education. It's now my great pleasure to introduce the person who organizes everything with her team um, to make this event uh, possible and also bring all these um, entrepreneurial training to our students, and she will tell you even more. And that's Stacy Stoop, our interim director of the Radcliffe Center at MICA. Stacy, thank you. Good evening. This year's Upstar cohort is full of passion, integrity, and an innovative commitment to entrepreneurship. After advancing through a competitive first round of judging, the finalists spent the last four months with mentors and guest speakers to develop their pitch, hone their plan, and engage their networks. I'd like to recognize our round one judges, um, our round one judges who had the difficult task of vetting more than 31 ventures down to the eight you will see tonight. 
I'd like to also thank the Upstart speakers who have shared their expert knowledge with the fellows. I'd especially like to extend a sincere appreciation to all the mentors who stepped up to the plate to help our ventures refine their ideas and review business plans and critique their pitches. I want to express my deepest regards and thanks to the round two judges who lent their expertise in evaluating the eight finalists. The RCCE was established in 2019 to expand MICA's educational mission to empower students to forge purposeful, creative lives and careers. The Upstart competition was created with the support of the Radcliffe Foundation, and the recipient awards are funded each year through their generosity. The Radcliffe Center for Creative Entrepreneurship is a hub for MICA students and alum to engage with programs that connect to resources and training that go beyond their creative ideas into becoming viable businesses. Some of the signature programs include Just Start, eStudio, and eIntern. To learn more about these initiatives, we have a program summary and links to the RCCE website in your gift bags. Several of the finalists have been guided through the entrepreneur courses in MICA's Creative Entrepreneurship Minor, taught by RCCE faculty co-director, Dr. Melody Davis Bundridge. This curricular knowledge is building a journey towards creative entrepreneurship, understanding that moves beyond theory and into the real world of industry. In preparation for the finale, on May 10th, the Upstart Fellows joined the six Reef Fellows from the Radcliffe Environmental Entrepreneurship Fellowship Program, and that was based at the Institute of Marine and Environmental Technology for an evening bringing together science and art for the fourth iteration of the Pitch and Mix. As a commitment to the Baltimore creative community, MICA has a partnership with Baltimore Creative Acceleration Network that expands its reach beyond MICA-specific students and into the local creative ecosystem. Maggie Vijegas and the BCAN team continue to strive to transform that connection to inspire collaborative collaboration within the community. We are thrilled to see the BCAN alum and the MICA Upstart alum who will be tabling with us later this evening. At this time, each of our finalists will have three minutes to pitch and you will get the chance to decide the vote for the $5,000 People's Choice vote. So without further ado, are you ready to meet this year's cohort? Live voting will start right after we watch all the pitches. Let's kick off the program with Aura the Brand. Hello. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys came. Um, let me introduce myself. <laughs> um, my name is Alana Wallach. Um, I'm a student here, and I am the founder of Aura. We're a multifunctional clothing brand that makes transforming garments and accessories that can be flipped upside down, inside out, and worn dozens of ways for the price of one. Our name really says it all. Our products can be a dress, or a pants, or even a bag, or a belt. <laughs> They're adjustable in size, length, color, and more to accommodate changing bodies and needs over time. Growing up, and yes, that's me, I suffered from severe eating disorders because I felt like I couldn't control my appearance through fashion. And like 64% of people under 25, I felt forced to buy fast fashion just to gain some control within my budget. And even so, I could never find pieces that actually fit me. But these experiences made me pursue a career in fashion. Before Aura, I interned at the Belvedere Terrace Atelier with fashion entrepreneurs and worked at major brands in New York like Maison de Papillon and Adika and continued to show my own work in venues like Vancouver Fashion Week. But all these experiences just highlighted everything that's going terribly wrong in the industry. Until now, we've been producing disposable, unsustainable, and single-function garments that can adapt to the individual or over time. 11 billion tons of clothing are thrown out every single year, and 93% of fast fashion retailers don't pay their garment workers a living wage. And 
What's worse, we can't find sustainable, accessible alternatives because they don't exist. Until now. <laughs> we at Aura quickly realized that there is a way to offer that everything that fast fashion does without inflicting the same harm on both people and the planet. A $70 Aura garment that's wearable six ways can be marketed for less than $15 per style. And by buying just one Aura garment, you're saving an average of 10 more from the landfill. And while there are other sustainable and multifunctional clothing brands, absolutely none can compete with fast fashion prices. They don't prioritize young people, and their garments can usually only be worn four ways max. At Aura, 20. <laughs> and people have started noticing. We've already sold more than 20 garments by attending pop-up events and by starting pre-orders just in March. Our revenue model is composed of three sources of income, e-commerce orders, pop-up events, and wholesale orders, which we're beginning next year. Our SOM is worth almost $500,000, which is composed of a target market of young, creative people in the East Coast. But without your funding, we can't fulfill our demand or sustain our amazing, amazing momentum. So to cover the costs of marketing, prototype preparation, pop-up expenses, manufacturing, and legal advice, we're asking for $32,600 from Upstart, which won't just help us to end the future of fast fashion, but more specifically, it'll allow us to prepare our samples to manufacture our first small batch production run this summer, which will allow us to fulfill all of our pre-orders by August. With your funding, we can earn $32,000 by the end of year one, and by the end of year two, almost $44,000. Thank you so much for coming and watching. I'm so grateful for your time and consideration. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
um, $10,000 will go to boards, making 3,000 um, seed character cards. Um, each unit will sell for $12. And with these character cards, within each unit, will contain these character cards that are printed on um, seed paper. So you can either collect, trade, or grow it. And that's not all. We want children to really fall in love with these like um, plants that these characters represent, right? Um, so, to make that possible, as well as to teach them how to successfully care for these plants and encourage them to not give up like my little self did, we are asking, well, we would need $45,000 um, for animation production. But, hold on, I recently graduated as an animation um, major at MICA, and so because of that, it has been significantly cut down because I'll be investing $35,000 worth of my time as a skilled animator into the venture. Um, and the remaining $10,000 will go towards in-person marketing. Um, with the $30,000 in um, investment, we anticipate um, earning $70,000 in revenue by uh, the end of the, the second year. Now is the time to act on this venture because climate change is on everyone's mind and a significant amount of people in urban communities have access to smart devices. Um, let's help the next generation have fun while they make a lasting positive impact on their future. If you have any questions, if this wasn't clear, you know, just go to the website or email this um, email address. Thank you for listening, and I hope you continue to support this venture. Next up is Endless Dolls. Hi, my name is Kendra Bray. I'm owner and creator of Endless Dolls. I'm also an adult who buys toys for themselves. And as of 2022, the kid old target demographic makes 2.25 billion dollars worth of toy sales. And that number is growing. Now, some kiddos buy dolls in order to create something new in a transformative process called doll customizing. Now, <laughs> now doll customizing can be as simple as repainting the face, snatching off a doll's old wig, or breaking down a doll's entire body to create something new, to simply put, it's art. On YouTube, doll customizing has 30 million views. And I'm known online as a doll customizer with a channel with over a million views. And I started this journey because there weren't enough dolls that look like me. And look at me, I would make a great doll, okay? <laughs> and so, <laughs> And so I created tutorials to help others turn their girl dolls into male dolls and their white dolls into black dolls. Don't worry about the ethics, okay? Just know why we did it. There's a shortage of black and brown and male dolls to customize with. So Endless Dolls took a survey asking kiddos, what is stopping you from creating dolls? And the majority of them said, time. Now, even though we're called kid adults, we're not kids. We're adults with weird hobbies, okay? So can you remember the last time you had to stop working on a project because you had bills to pay? Oof. You had children to attend to. You had, God forbid, a job to go to every single day. My God, so imagine spending an entire, an entire month on a project only for it to end up looking like this. Oh my God, I'd swipe left. See, changing the skin tone and changing the body of a doll takes so much time to a point where people will stop finishing their projects and lead to burnout. So Enlist Dolls set out to make doll customizing easier. To start, we offer 51 different color options instead of the four measly options that we get. So we already cut down 60% of the process of doll customizing. 
We even take our dolls and cast them in semi-soft resin so you can drill, you can sand, you can remove unwanted features like breasts without, without patching holes because our dolls are casted thick versus hollow. We even name our dolls Anther and Stigma because that is the feminine and masculine parts of a flower. Because like flower, people can be both masculine and feminine because gender is on a spectrum. And to reiterate that, <laughs> we've introduced <laughs> interchangeable doll parts. So you can, you can create trans, cis, non-binary doll representation with just mixing and matching. So no more sanding and patchy finishes. I'm asking Upstart for $30,000 for a metal building to put on land that we've already acquired. No loans, honey, no loans. <laughs> So we already have uh, rotational casting machines, um, pretty much everything that we need to do to start creating endless dolls today. Because doll making should be, and it can be, endless. Thank you. Next up is Chimera. Hello. Scientific misinformation can cost people their lives, but what if you could fix it? maybe with some kind of vaccine against misinformation? In 2020, artist Talia Green gathered all of the conspiracy theories she could find spreading falsehoods about COVID-19. She translated them into an amino acid sequence and inserted them into a real live virus to create antisense therapy, a vaccine against COVID misinformation. This real vaccine wasn't distributed at your local pharmacy. Rather, it was on display in an art gallery to create awareness and discussion around the spread of fake science that was so prevalent in 2020. This is an example of bioart, a form of art that explores how biotech is transforming our understanding of our bodies and our environment. I'm Angela McQuillan, the founder of Chimera, a gallery focused on the intersection of art, biology, and technology. The bioart movement started about 20 years ago, and you may have heard of the genetically engineered glowing green bunny named Alba. Since then, artists and designers have been exploring biotechnology. Academic programs have popped up all over the world focusing on new materials to make sustainable food, textiles, buildings, clothing, and other materials. The problem is that bioart is typically shown in academic galleries or museums and does not have a large presence in the global art market. These artists rely on teaching positions and grant funding and are generally excluded from making money from sales. Chimera is the first commercial gallery in the world that specializes in selling art related to biotechnology. We provide a sales platform and a client base for these groundbreaking artists. Groups who are underrepresented in science are also underrepresented in bioart. They need access to scientists and expensive laboratory equipment, and these opportunities are few and far between. Chimera is dedicated to connecting artists and scientists. We bridge this gap and provide thought leadership in the art world by giving artists a platform at major art fairs and events. I have nine years of experience as a gallery director. I have dual degrees in both fine arts and biology and 10 years of experience working in biotech. I've curated over 50 art exhibitions and started a residency program putting artists such as Talia Green inside a biotechnology lab. Chimera caters to life science companies for lobbies and office spaces. Philly has over 500 biotech companies. That number is increasing, and there's a huge real estate boom for new construction. 
We're currently seeking $40,000 to buy a booth for pop-ups and art fairs, for startup costs for our brick and mortar space, as well as our spot in three art fairs in 2024, where we can engage with customers, collectors, and patrons of the arts to expand our market and be at the forefront of this fast-growing segment of the art world. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Darling City. Hello, my name is Laura Cromus, and I am the founder of Darling City. For the social parent, Darling City creates on-the-go play essentials that capture the city's signature foods and brews into interactive soft toys that engage baby promote development and enrich community because our toys are authentic to a city unlike any other toy company. We tell a story. Fam we understand the realities of parenting. It's hard. Family time is essential. Um, it's important to preserve a social identity. Sorry, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hi again. Thank you. My name is Laura Cromus, and I am the founder of Darling City. For the social parent, Darling City creates on-the-go play essentials that capture their city's signature foods and brews into interactive soft toys that engage baby, promote development, and enrich community. Because our toys are authentic to a city's experience unlike any other toy company. We tell a story. We understand the realities of parenthood. It's hard. Playtime is essentially a preserving a social identity is necessary. You know, you ask yourself in the mom space, how come nobody ever gave you a heads up that you can lose your social identity, you long for your social life, but love your new life, that you wouldn't change a bit? So what if you can go out and socialize with baby in tow. Enjoy those signature foods and brews. Think family day dates. Think new city experiences. You know, we're here to help support the shift in how families think about and redefine family time. As 60% say, I don't only think about kids' specific activities. So what are they doing? They're bringing their babies to breweries, outdoor festivals. You know, because craft beer right now equals community. And the Darling City parent values community and connection. This $27 billion industry welcomes families. And Darling City, all pun intended, will totally tap into that industry by offering a keepsake novelty item tip for parents to bring alongside them ba with baby on the go. Starting with our city softbook, think of Darling City's softbook as an O'Day to your city. They're quiet and appropriate for a restaurant and a brewery setting. And that light humor, it's relatable. Because guess what, Dad? You can have your crab cake and eat it, too. Take our FOMO mat, sing along, sit along the inner harbor, engage with baby while sipping your favorite brews. Our high contrast prints stimulate baby's optic nerves, and our crinkle and squeak sounds offer auditory stimulation, teaching baby cause and effect. Think of our products as a parenting hack, because we all know Every parent needs a chance to get out of the house, connect with friends, and maybe even share a pint. We plan to sell direct to consumer on our website, tapping into the whatever, whatever they're already following, their restaurants, the breweries, as social media is the marketplace and the preferred way to shop. We're also going to target our grandparents and gift givers because they buy everything, right? Think gift shops, airports, etc. So we'll, sh we'll sell business to business. It's important to us because we value community and connection. It, all of our products need to be made in the United States with ethical small batch manufacturing. With this, we have a profit margin of 57%. And we'll break even after selling only seven products. Please allow me to get my product off the ground sooner, reduce the risk of excess inventory, and lead a more agile supply chain, and bring families and their cities together through play. 
Thank you. Next up, we have Baldred Studios. Hey, everybody. My name's Natalie, this is Addison, and we're here to talk about Baldred Studios. We're on a mission to expand our initiative and grow music education, no matter the background of anyone. And so we sell music education lessons through face-to-face, -face, recorded content, and through online education. But before we get too far, let's talk about who we are and where we've been. Hi, I'm Addison, and you should know something. I'm not just a ginger, I'm a musical ginger. I'm a performer and I'm a director entering my sixth year of teaching, and I want to address the lack of music pedagogy that is truly student-focused in its delivery of theory and performance teaching. I started Baldridge Studios to teach students vocal lessons where they were the center of the curriculum and where they determined their pinpoints of success. Now, this is where I come into the picture. I have years of media and operations experience. My communications backgrounds helps us define our digital presence. And I've also earned my MPS in Business of Art and Design, and I work as an event operations manager. Together, we're excited to make a practical difference in our communities through something as uniting and universal as music. Now, we know consistency is necessary for growth. So we've created an incentive package for customers to buy lessons months at a time. For our dedicated students, the 12-month contract is the best option, with lessons priced at $70 an hour with a 30% overhead in order to keep lessons affordable for families, but still valuable for our teachers' time. Non-synchronous lessons will be recorded and marketed at a monthly subscription rate of 20% the cost of a single lesson in order to promote accessibility. So our clientele consists of two demographics. For our synchronous lessons, we're confident from our six years of operation that we're targeting married mothers aged 35 to 50 with creative families. They typically have a dual income household of 80 to 150K. For our non-synchronous lessons, our newest venture, we're looking to provide music education to everyone, no matter the geographic or the socioeconomic backgrounds, you just gotta be passionate about music. With your contribution of $22,000, Baldridge Studios will be able to grow like never before. In order to record perfect synchronous, uh, asynchronous lessons and offer seamless synchronous electronic lessons, we need a bundle of production tech. So in July 23, the first half of your investment will purchase all of the necessary equipment for us to record lessons and populate our website's lesson forum. Later in January 24, the second half of your investment will purchase all of the equipment we need to hire five new teachers on our team for synchronous e-lessons. So with this information, we're also looking for industry partnerships so that we can bolster our internal processes and gain industry connections so that we can launch Baldrige Studios 2.0 like never before. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The next venture is No Crastination. Hi everyone, I'm Natasha Frey and I want to introduce you guys to No Crastination, a solution that will help you take charge of your productivity. So we're going to play a little game. Uh, give me a show of hands for anyone in the room who uses any of these productivity apps or maybe uses notepads or um, planners. Okay, okay, I see some hands. Now um, put those hands down if you still procrastinate. All right, so I still see some hands up, and that's okay, because it's estimated that 75% of all adults in America procrastinate on occasion, so you're not alone. So this is me. Um, I'm actually an adult with ADHD, and I'm also a chronic procrastinator, and this was a challenge. Um, I actually needed a solution to help me, because I was a... I was an art director at IBM. My job was very, very high pressured and it was getting more and more taxing with more responsibilities. So I was posed with the solution of either get help or get fired. So I got therapy. 
And um, <laughs> with therapy, I actually learned that in addition to those productivity tools that we saw, I also needed a human being in the form of a account an accountability partner to help me get my work done and stay on task. So I came up with the idea of no procrastination out of that. And no procrastination is a service that pairs up an individual with an accountability partner called the no procrastin concierge. They'll help them stay on task with, through weekly check-ins. And also, did you guys did you guys know this that people like me, the adults with ADHD, are actually costing businesses up to 138 billion dollars in missed opportunities and missed deadlines? So we don't want that. So this is the no procrastination concierge. This is a person that was born out of the idea of me consulting with therapists to come up with a framework that they'll follow. And through that practice, the concierge will check in with the client weekly through Zoom and through phone calls to prioritize their tasks, to help them set their goals, and most importantly, act as that accountability partner. It's actually estimated that 90% of people who have an accountability partner are able to be successful in whatever that they partnered with. And in terms of opportunity, as you guys already saw, there's 75% of everyone who procrastinates on occasion. So there's a great opportunity here. And it's over $9 billion of the productivity market that no procrastination can tap into. The channels that I'll use to advertise are going to be social media, social media, mental health sites, and most importantly, direct, direct marketing to entrepreneurs and companies looking for um, solutions with their professional development. And our target market is going to be, you know, adults that they're motivated, they just need a little bit of a push. These are going to be people aged 25 to 45, earning 65 to 120K. They're going to have high pressure jobs. They're going to be a little stressed out. They may actually also have some symptoms of ADHD, maybe not actual ADHD, but there'll be people who, have, who struggle with lack of focus and organizational skills. Um, they're going to be tech savvy and motivated, yet not performing to their full potential. So, the business model will be $49.99 a month, and it will be a subscription-based service, and we'll also be featuring some paid advertisements from therapists and counselors seeking new clients. And if Nocrastination was able to get three new employees, we would be able to make up to $8,450 in a month. That's amazing. So my big ask is $31,900. This is going to help us get the business off the ground by paying for those first employees needed to get started, as well as IT and um, advertising budget. So thank you guys so much for listening to me today, and here's to a future with no procrastination. Last venture for the evening is Oops Duck. Come on, come on, keep me going. And stop, and stop, and done. <laughs> Hi, we're Oops Duck. In high school, we all bonded over a love of offbeat humor and niche alternative media. Entering college and beginning the freelancer grind, Felt like we'd have to leave that part of ourselves behind in order to be respected by clients and professionals. Aww. <laughs> but we soon realized that humor and experimental edge we were trying to separate from our work is exactly what made our service unique and memorable. Nine in 10 customers prefer brands to be funny, with Gen Z and millennials over-indexing at 94%. Yet a majority of business leaders fear using humor in consumer interaction. With our combined understanding of youthful online subcultures, we could create a brand that helps businesses compete in the ever-expanding attention marketplace. So with that in mind, we create an Oopstuck, a worker Woo! cooperative. <laughs> yes. A worker cooperative that's half creative agency and half production studio. As a creative agency, we offer many services to our clients. This includes posters, logos, music, sound design, animation, apparel, sometimes even VR. 
you can say that we're a uh, multifaceted. Basically, with Oopstuck, we can continue doing the work that we've been doing as freelancers. But now, with the protections and support that come with being united. So, as a production studio, however, we will be producing films and online contents that can be monetized through intellectual property, licensing, content subscription, and ad revenue. So, our current productions include Small Showers. It's a very touching short film that we're currently submitting to uh, Academy Award qualifying film festivals. We also produce Free Art School University. It's a podcast with over a thousand hits interviewing diverse, experienced artists. It provides a valuable resource to aspiring artists while expanding our network of potential collaborators. Okay, our work as a production studio will take longer to realize a return on our investment. So establishing a loyal audience that identifies with the personality of Oopstuck, that is going to set us apart from competitors. This will make us more appealing to clients and distributors that may want to tap into our audience. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> sorry, I don't know how that got in there. Uh, <laughs> in summary, these are the sources of revenue that will drive the growth of Oopstuck. We're aiming for diversification, but we expect creative services to be our largest uh, source of revenue at the start. Currently, we're profitable. So far, Oopstuck has had 16 unique clients, making 7,735 in, in revenue, all while studying in school full time. With your help, we can boost that number by serving larger businesses with bigger budgets. Oopstuck is asking for $36,900. This money will go towards art design and business software, computer hardware for rendering complex projects, audiovisual equipment that will enable our expansion into videography, marketing materials to seek larger clients, and legal and financial services to ensure a sturdy foundation. We're also asking everybody here seeking creative services to get in touch with us. Or if you know anybody uh, that may need some creative services as well, let us know. Here's our website and social media. And Sammy, uh, see me outside, I can explain. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Before we begin the public vote, I can say about eight years ago, I was on the stage at the University of Baltimore giving my first pitch, and I remember my knees were chattering, and they still do. And I think that really is a testament to showing up to the work. And I am honored to see the growth in these fellows, in this program, and continuing to show up. And I am excited to see the future of their ventures um, as a re result of this opportunity. But now here's your moment to be able to choose who your favorite venture is for the day. You have three minutes to select with this, scan. you can scan this app or you can text upstart and then select that venture. So go ahead, I'm starting the timer now.
We have less than a minute left. I was thinking to ask Addison to come up here and sing a tune as we were waiting. <laughs> Quanto è bello, quanto è caro, Dio è vero e più mi piace, ma in quel cor non sono capace, le vi affetto ad inspirare. You can still vote. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have 30 seconds left, and then we will close voting. I had to whisper it very quietly. <laughs> All right. I am going to now ask Carleen Cassidy to join us on stage, um, just to do a little reflections on this evening before we present the awards. Thank you, Stacy. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Really, I'm just killing time while they write the winner's choice uh, on that check. But in all sincerity, first I want to acknowledge Stacy, her incredible leadership, President Sammy Hoy, who totally embraces creative entrepreneurship. And I want to take a moment just to share with you why the Radcliffe Foundation is involved here. Philip and Carol founded the Radcliffe Foundation 20 years ago. Personally, they were both very creative. They were makers. They made their own furniture. They also ran companies. They were hardworking, but inherent in everyone, they believed was the capacity to cre create and to contribute. And they valued art, they valued creativity, they valued entrepreneurs. They recognized that out of the gates, not everybody succeeds the first time through, but through persistence, by pivoting, adapting, continuing to work hard and grow, People will go on to do great things. I love seeing past winners out front in the lobby this afternoon. I had the opportunity to go visit with some of them earlier this year, and it's just awesome to see, and as Sammy pointed out earlier, over the last seven years to see so many of those businesses continuing to be successful. That really is what this program is all about. The Radcliffe Foundation is thrilled to continue to support these creative entrepreneurs along their journey. Now this cohort, you all just had a chance to see them. I had an opportunity to watch their preview, if you will, uh, when they were over at IMED about a month ago. And it's great to see their presentation skills continue to evolve. Their business ideas were solid from the beginning. I'm excited to see who the winners are. And I think I'm between you all and them and some checks. So I'm getting out of the way. Here you go, Stacy. thank you again. Now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, let's announce the ventures who will be receiving funding. But something new has happened this year. Um, the top three ranked ventures, which we will announce, receive the highest award funds, but the other five finalists, the judges decided that they would each be awarded a sa the same amount at $6,000 so that they could seed invest into their ideas and evolve that into the incubator. <laughs> so it sounds like the audience agrees. All right, um, I, I will make a little note. As the fellows are being awarded, I ask that we wait to take photos and do congratulations at the end um, so that we can then um, have you enjoy a nice meal upstairs. All right, um, being awarded $30,000 with a top ranking uh, award amount is, drum roll, Aura the Brand.
I'm just getting down. <laughs> All right, um, sec second ranked venture is Baldridge Studios. And they're receiving the award of $20,000. We're going to do it after. Um, and then third ranking um, venture is Chimera being awarded $20,000. And so we're going to run through the ventures that are now being seed invested in with $6,000 each with eSprouts. No seed pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Endless Dolls with $6,000. Next up, we have Darling City with $6,000. And then we have No Crustination with $6,000. And then Oops Stuck with $6,000. There's not enough room for all the money on this stage. <laughs> all right, for the People's Choice winner, drum roll. You've got Oopstock. <laughs> with $5,000. And I forgot to mention, I find the irony in this is that we have an entrepreneurship studio that will equip them with a startup venture package. So our, um, we'll have a, a team of four interns that will work with Andre um, with a custom built uh, startup kit, which is probably great learning for a creative team. So they'll also receive that in addition to the $5,000 award fund. So can we have a round of applause for all our finalists? Twenty twenty three upstart fellows. Entrepreneurship is challenging, but so is your creative practice. The best reward is the, are the moments we overcome the when we overcome the doubt to stand up, stand up strong because you came out here tonight and you show the world how entrepreneurship in the arts really matters from an impact driven venture and into the world. So we're really honored to have you represent the university into the world. Thank you. <laughs> um, audience and friends, let's take a moment to celebrate all of our 2023 Upstart finalists. Woohoo! <laughs> and now we're going to welcome President Samuel Hoy back to close us out. Thank you, Stacy. Congratulations, everyone. And a big round of applause for them, please. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, actually, this is truly a quick um, conclusion just to um, say that I usually say that there are no losers. And this year, thanks to our judges' really wise decision to seat everyone, there are indeed no losers. Plus, the experience you're going through, I think you're going to benefit for a lifetime. I, that's what the alumni from this competition always said, is the experience that actually made much more than, than the check, the, the mentorship, the connections, the networking that you got. So I think this is um, a, an experience. You'll keep paying, and then your wonderful ventures and its impact will also keep giving back to our society and the world, too. So thank you so much. With that, I'm going to just invite you all to uh, come into the lobby and chat with our winners, chat with our uh, both uh, BCAN and Venture Competitions alumni, uh, and really talk to um, each other and have a great time. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And I missed my cue, but I also want to make sure I thank the events team yes. and Human Being Productions, Absolutely. the Career Development Office, and the RCCE team for all your fantastic support. Thank you, and thank you to the Radcliffe Foundation.
you, you want to invite them up? Yes, now we're okay. doing. And then now we're going to have any of our mentors and speakers who have supported this program to join us on stage if you like, as, long, as well as the Radcliffe Foundation for Photos. Thank you. No, thank you. This is great. Okay, I'm going to